So for Singapore, what is it? They have Sisu. I don't think we want to say Kiasu. The World Happiness Report ranked Finns as the happiest people in the world six years in a row. A recent New York Times article caught my eye. It reported that the reality of the state of happiness in Finland is actually more complex. The report says that Finnish people are happy about their strong social safety net, but they also worry a lot about the security and domestic political situation. The report went on to say this, I quote, the happiest people in the world aren't that happy, more like content, unquote. It went on to say that there is a way of life in Finland called Sisu, S-I-S-U, Sisu, which roughly translates to, I quote, grim determination in the face of hardship, unquote. That apparently bring you happiness. And you can understand how Sisu came about, given Finland's harsh climate living condition and a strong sense of insecurity due to a long common border with a big and historically unfriendly neighbour, Russia. So when you have such a long yet inaccurate English description, struggling to translate a specific concept, you know this must be some kind of unique characteristics embedded in the DNA of a particular people and in this case, the Finns. So for Singapore, what is it? They have Sisu. I don't think we want to say Kiasu. But for Singapore, a small island along the equator, in the middle of Southeast Asia, with a diverse population, with, at the intersection of the world, I think we have a different trait. A quiet unity, optimism, a stout-heartedness that we can together overcome all challenges. To ensure intergenerational mixing, HDB is redeveloping the old areas, launching new BTO projects to inject a younger population into the town. At the neighbourhood level, level, the physical environment is becoming more friendly and livable to all ages, all over Singapore. Wherever possible, Active ageing centres, three generational playgrounds, childcare centres are located side by side. So you can see our living environment is bending its form to suit today's society's shape. All these are deliberate efforts to help us prepare for an older society. Now, second area is we need to adapt our economy to an ageing population. Governments around the world has two common manpower worries. We are concerned that technology will replace human workers. And then if that happens, then on the large scale, there will be too many workers and too few jobs. We are also concerned about the imminent shortage of manpower due to an aging population. And so there will be too few workers and too many jobs unfilled. So instead of losing sleep over contradictory worries, one perhaps may be the solution for the other. The confluence of both major trends, AI and technology and ageing, can be an opportunity to elevate our economy. In Singapore, we are fortunate to have the CPF system. With the CPF system, we avoided the major problems faced by pension systems around the world. The CPF system, however, is not without its challenges. One challenge is that life expectancy differs from person to person. So someone who lives longer may see their CPF savings run out before they passed on. Hence, in 2009, we introduced the CPF Life Scheme. Another challenge is that some segments of society do not save enough in their CPF accounts. Hence, in 2007, we introduced Workfare to top up the salaries of lower income workers so that they can save more for retirement. MOM will continue to look at ways and means to improve retirement adequacy of Singaporeans. Like pension systems, most health systems in the world 
are designed when life expectancy were much lower. These systems focused on hospital care, which is the most costly part of the whole healthcare ecosystem. But as life expectancy rose, so did the disease burden. The old design starts to break down. The situation is also like an overflowing kitchen sink. We can keep mopping and soaking up the water on the floor, but the work is endless and the effort increasingly trying. At some point, we need to figure out how to turn down the tap. Hence, building on the foundation established over many years, we developed Healthier SG, our preventive care strategy, which we were launched in July this year. However, it is the commonsensical easy things that always get put off because there are no immediate consequences and therefore they, fall, they fell prey to inertia. Community support can help us overcome those inertia. Hence, beyond Healthier SG, the next area of priority for MOH is to build up community care, to get us all to do what is right for our health, to support aging in communities. Finally, the fifth area, there is also the significant factor of good governance. Preparing for aging, be it in the area of urban planning, economic development, retirement adequacy, or healthcare reforms, requires anticipatory policy making, which is the hallmark of the Singapore government. We have made preparations for an aged society in these areas well ahead of time. We have had more than a decade of head start before the problem caught up with us. And perhaps one day, after we tackle the challenges of a super-aged society with our Singapore spirit, we can reach the stage where society treats age as nothing but a number. And 65 need not be that artificial line that divides the two sides of the dependency ratio.